He just shall live by faith through the new covenant. Jesus was living under the old covenant. The Bible says he was born under law. Jesus said, I did not come to a Bible study, I came to fulfill it. He was under law. He had to keep it. Are you feeling me? Did you pass one? No? But that's good? Okay. Brethren, okay, so which is it? I've got to ask you, this is a test. Okay, do you got to be more interested the Pharisees? Or do you got to be born again? Got to be born again. Well, help me out. Got to be born again. This is a test. Okay, okay, now, um, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God and for, okay, this is proving my point. Okay, brethren, my heart's, this is Paul preaching, okay, and he says, my heart's desire and prayer for God, to God for Israel is that they may be saved. He wants all Israel saved. Mm -hmm. They're rejecting him, right? They're persecuting him, okay? But he used to persecute Christians himself. That's why he says, I bear witness. Mm -hmm. Because he used to do it himself. He knows exactly where they're coming from. Okay? I want everybody to say, but I bear witness, that they have a zeal for God. See, we can have a zeal for God today and be clueless. Mm -hmm. Don't have a clue what you're talking about. They have a zeal for God, but without knowledge. Without knowledge. Right? Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. See, mm -hmm. there is a place where you can be totally ignorant of God's righteousness given to you as a gift. Come on. Not being more righteous than the Pharisees, so I can brag about. Look how I tell I'm more righteous than the Pharisees. No, he's talking about God's righteousness, right? Not a, that for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, right. they have not submitted to the righteousness of the God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness of those who believe. See, Jesus ended all that. Mm -hmm. That God, if I'm trying to be more righteous than the Pharisees today, what Jesus said to do, if I'm doing that today. I'm trying to establish my own. He says, we're not, but that's where you have a zeal for God without knowledge. You're clueless. He said to stop that. Just receive the righteousness of God for free. You know what righteousness is? Right standing. Yep. Amen. You can have total right standing before God because Jesus became sin for you. Amen. Amen. And now you can become the righteous of God in him. Amen. There it is. For just as through the discipline, now this is heavy, okay, this is what we want. This is the righteousness we want to put our faith in. You ready? Not my righteousness trying to be more righteous. A righteousness, not my obedience making me righteous. Come on. Not my obedience. For just as through the disobedience of one man, that's Adam. Adam. The many were made sinners. People mm -hmm. were made sinners because of Adam. Yeah. Okay, also through the obedience of one man, Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Jesus. The many Amen. will be made righteous. Amen. His obedience makes me righteous, not mine. So I can be as righteous as I want to be, and, you know, be, try to be more righteous than the Pharisees. It's never going to cut it. I need to be born again. Oh, buddy. You receive the righteousness as a gift. Go ahead, next one. This is good. Are you feeling me? I'm yeah. not trying to get this started. It's just an introduction. But I tell you that I've been just studying this for five, six years now, so I get it, so I can preach it, man. I don't, I don't like just receiving. I like to share it. Okay. But I tell you that anyone who is even angry with their brother is the anger of judgment. Yeah. Anger, judgment. Yeah. Come on. Right. Anyone who says brother and sister raka is answerable to the court. But anyone who says you fool, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Paul called the Galatians foolish. He called them good. He called them foolish. He says, "You foolish Galatians." Mm -hmm. like, ah. He says, "And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of hellfire." Okay, you can go to hell for just calling somebody fool. You know the, you know the old covenant was strict. You know they have laws mm -hmm. under the Mosaic law that aren't even crimes today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is heavy. This is yes. Yeah. You, know, you know adultery? It was punishable by death. Yep. You could be yeah. stoned. Yeah. It's yeah. not even a crime today. You don't get arrested for committing adultery. It's not even a crime under the law. Oh, but when Jesus was walking around on this earth, punishable by death. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, cursing your parents. Oh my God, you know, kidnapping. Mm -hmm. That's a law today. You yeah. can't kidnap people, but it was punishable by death back then. Yeah. You know, cursing your parents, punishable by death. Mm -hmm. It's not even a crime today. Mm -hmm. Under the Mosaic law, you'd be killed. Witchcraft, idolatry, homosexuality, these aren't even crimes today. You don't even get arrested for that. Punishable by death under the Mosaic law. When Jesus was walking around on this earth, 
That's the way it was. It was strict. Mm -hmm. That's why he's talking like this. That's why he's talking like this. Wow, that's good. <laughs> that's heavy. Mm -hmm. You don't hear this piece like this all my night. I'm sure I'll go it. <laughs> People used to trap me with what Jesus said when I'd be preaching the grace of Paul's message of grace, the, the true gospel. I'd be preaching on it. People would trap me and say, oh, what Jesus said. I didn't know how to deal with it. But you know what? Now I do. When they tell me, well, Jesus said this, I say, well, Jesus also said this. Whoo! Just mm -hmm. deal with them with Jesus' own words. Because he mm -hmm. preached two different covenants. Yeah, old covenant, new covenant. Oh, buddy! And if we do that, if we don't understand this, and we do that today, we're mixing law and grace. If we do what Jesus was doing, we're polluting the gospel of God's grace. Paul talked about it in Galatians. He's calling out curses on people who pervert the gospel of God's grace. If we do that today, oh, buddy. He's calling out curses. God takes that very seriously. So if you do what Jesus was doing, you're mixing law and grace. Jesus did that because he was living under the law. We mm. aren't. Mm. Okay? He had to get, bring people to the end of well, the, They made the law doable. This is how they could do the law. Jesus said one time, he said, none of you keep the law. Why are you trying to kill me? Mm. They made it doable. They weren't keeping it. It's heavy. <laughs> the law says you've got to love God with all your mind, soul, and strength. You know what Paul said? No one seeks after God. That's right. Yeah. Booyah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing it. Oh, I love God with all my heart, soul, and strength. Come back. You love other things too. You put other things before God. We all do. Thank God, God is working in you to will you to do what pleases Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. 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 That's the Lord. That's right. If I'm doing the work for God, it's God. The Bible says we're His workmanship. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing the work for God, it's God working in me. Oh, buddy. Okay, so God. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the world who believes in him will not perish. What do you say? You go to hell for calling somebody full. He says if you just believe on the same, you won't perish. You know the whole Sermon on the Mount? Jesus never put out himself as a solution. Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he never put himself out there as a solution to this sin problem. That's heavy. But in John, the Gospel of John, that's all he does. John, go read the Gospel of John. John doesn't mention any scary parables. He doesn't mention any threats of judgment and condemnation in hell. John, the Gospel of John, he doesn't go there. The Gospel of John just says it's believer and unbeliever. Hmm. You know, those who believe have eternal life. Those who don't believe, the wrath of God abides on them. Come on. Yeah. That's John. John brags on the love of God. Mm -hmm. John talks about how, how you only see it in John when he says, God so loved the world that he gave his son to die for you, so you won't perish but have eternal life. He says it's only in the Gospel of John that he says, a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. He's bragging on the love of God. Mm -hmm. He says I, he, he refers to himself as a disciple whom Jesus loved. He's not saying I'm the disciple who loved Jesus. <laughs> he says I'm the disciple whom Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. He's bragging on the love of God. <sighs> I love bragging on the love of God. Yes, right? Amen. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> this is dancing music. We don't want to go with Jesus, what he said when he's threatening you with punishment. That's marching orders. Go with where Jesus is putting it on himself. And that's your dancing lessons. Okay? Big difference. You want to march to the beat of a drum or you want to dance to music, of gospel music? Come on. <laughs> that's heavy. <laughs> this is a good sign. That's good. I see you're smiling back there. Oh, that's good. Okay, you ready? Okay, whoever believes on the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son, for the God, wrath of God abides on them. Yep. God's anger is for who? The unbeliever. Unbeliever! It's not for you as a believer. There's no wrath for you. You're not going to hell. You're not going to perish. You got eternal life. Amen. Just for believing on the Son. Just for believing that the Father sent him, you won't be judged, he said. <sighs> Keep going. This is good. Oh my God. Okay, I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe. And that I am he. Come on. You will indeed. Yeah. Just said it twice. You're going to die. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. You're dead. I wonder why. They're spiritually dead. You know when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was ministering to people that were spiritually dead. dead. They, need, they didn't need more laws. They needed a resurrection. There you yes. go. Yeah. And that's what we get in Christ. Amen. Is that good? Yeah. Amen. The Bible says Christ is your life. Cool. He says, you have the son, you have life. You have, don't have the son, you don't have life. And I'm writing this so you can know you have eternal life. Know you have eternal life. 
Cioè ci prendono sempre. Che cazzo sono in giro, eh? Bene, ok, next. <laughs> okay, so he said that you're going to die in your sins if you don't believe on the Son. You're dead. Look at this. Now this is to Martha. When Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead, he's talking to Martha and he says this to Martha. Okay, you know, Martha was a believer. Jesus used to love hanging out at their house. You see him always at Martha, Mary, and Lazarus' house. Hanging out. He liked going there. Why? Because they totally trusted him. They had an ear for anything he had to say. Oh, that's us. Okay, you ready? And he says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. But if you don't believe in him, you die. Didn't he just say that? That's what he said. Even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never, never die. die. Amen. Amen. And the question is, do you believe this? Oh, my God. Amen. I believe it. I'm trying to help you believe it. Let's go. Next. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother and sister is subject to judgment. We already went through this one, didn't we? Yes. Okay, go to the next, go to the next one. Whoever, okay. Verily I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged. He just said if you've been angry, you'll be judged. Mm -hmm. Here he says, no judgment. But you're already in the door. You're already crap, crap, crap. From life to death. I mean, from life, death, from death into life. Amen. You got the son, you got life. You believe on him, you won't perish. You have eternal life. Whew. Okay, next. Isn't that good? How are you feeling? See, you've got to know how to divide the words of Jesus. You gotta, there's a division. The Bible says to, for us to rightly divide the word of truth. Come on. means that there was something that would be true for them before the cross, and there's something that would not be true for us, and there's something that is true for us that would not be true for them before the cross. There's somebody, did you see that? The cross is dividing line. He ain't got the cross yet. Okay. He's talking. We don't talk about it. I'm showing you. Okay, but I tell you, everyone who will ha have to give an account on the day of judgment. Oh my gosh, this is scary. You want to be scared? You want to be a miserable Christian? Take this to heart and live there. <laughs> I want to go there. God gave you a new heart. Come on, amen. Okay, so take that to your heart. Okay, but I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every idle word. What do you say? You can call somebody a fool in danger of hellfire. Here he says, any idle word. Yeah. Any careless word. You know, sometimes I, I play around sometimes at lunches. We go to lunches. I'm a little bit sarcastic. Sometimes I say something. Oh, boy, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of got kind of careless with my words. Oh, no, I'd be living under judgment for that, according to this. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And by your words, you will be acquitted. By your words, you will be condemned. Yeah. Mm. How are you feeling? Let's go to the next one. Ready? Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Who? What happened to that condemnation? Where'd it go? To the cross. You know there's a scripture that says the Father judges no one. He gave all judgment to the Son. You know what Jesus chose to do with your judgment? Your condemnation? Take it to the cross. The Father judges no one. Come on. Wow. So what is this Bible? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I hope I'm not screaming, but I'm glad because I know you guys in the back can hear me. Yeah. Okay, you ready? So, um, and why you can you stand condemned? Because they don't believe on the Son. See, when like John, like John, this is Gospel John, he likes to just go a believer and unbeliever. None of these harsh, threatening scriptures. Oh, bridemaids, the parable of bridemaids. Mm -hmm. Oh no, half of them are gonna be locked out. Oh no, oh, 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 you gotta forgive from your heart, otherwise you'll be you'll be thrown into tortures. Oh no. You know, all these parables, all these parables that can be scary. John don't have any of those in there. Go read his gospel, there's nothing in there. Mm -hmm. No threats of judgment. No scary stuff. The harshest he gets, he tells, the harshest as John goes, the harshest thing that John says is that your father's the devil. He tells that to the Pharisees because they're pushing him away. That's the harshest thing. That's as harsh as John gets. Is that me? <laughs> you ready? I know I've studied this long and hard. That's why I can tell you this and be confident. Like, Jesus, like they say about Jesus, he spoke as one who had authority. Mm -hmm. God willing, I can speak like that. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen? Amen. Uh, do we read that already? Okay, yeah. Therefore, There's no there is, this is Paul after the cross. Remember, Paul said, I only preach Christ crucified. He is always taken to the cross. And he says, flat out, there is no condemnation. None. For those who are in Christ. Amen. Amen. You're, you're, hey, yeah. You're either in Christ or you're in sin. If you're in Christ, Jesus became sin for you. And you are now the rights of God in him. 
But if you're in sin, the wrath of God abides on you. You're spiritually dead. You need a resurrection. Okay, let's go. Okay, um, who then is the one who is? How are we doing on time? Okay, we're good. Who then is, is the one who is? Who, who is? Okay, this is Romans chapter three. This is Paul after the cross, and he's saying, "Who is the one who condemns?" You remember, Jesus said, "You could be condemned for any other word." Who then is he condemned? No one. Christ Jesus is the one who see now it's the cross. Jesus Christ, who died more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and also is interceding for you. Amen. See, at, Jesus is your intercessor. He's got your back. The Bible says in Hebrews that, that he appears before God for you. Amen. Amen. It even says if you sin, you have an advocate. What is that advocate doing? Interceding for you. If, Thank even you. if you sin. Thank you, Jesus. Let's enjoy grace. Let's thank God. Go ahead, next one. Be perfect, therefore is the heavenly Father's word. This is Jesus talking in Sermon on the Mount. He tells you to be perfect. Oh my gosh, that leaves me out. Talk about a burial session. <laughs> talking about, boy, do I need a savior. Right? Maybe that's the point. So you can come to the end of yourself mm -hmm. and receive Jesus as your savior. Come on. Maybe that's the point of Sermon on the Mount. You know? Because he said right before Sermon on the Mount, he said, any jot and tittle is still... You, None of the, the law is being removed until, until it's fulfilled. Every jot and tittle is still in play. That's what he's saying. He's saying that every you know, every dot has to be every dot has to be dotted. Every t has to be every i has to be dotted. Every t has to be crossed. The law is still in the mix. Okay, you have to keep it. You have to do it. I did not come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it, and it's still in play until I fulfill it. Okay, he went to the cross and he fulfilled it, Amen. taking us out from under. Mm -hmm. Okay. But while he was walking on his work, it was still going on. That's why he went and so on. Right after he said that about every chop and kill, he went and so on the mouth. He's expounding on the law. It's not just murder. It's anger. It's not just adultery. Mm -hmm. It's lust. Mm -hmm. He's expounding on the law. The Bible says we're not under law, we're under grace. The Bible says all those who are led by the Spirit are not under the law. Now, it does not say that all those that are led by the Spirit now can keep the law. It does not say that. It does not say that all those who are led by the Spirit keep the law. That's right. It does not say that. Mm -hmm. It says all those who are led by the Spirit yeah. are not under the law. The law. Yep. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, so let's go. Okay. So he's saying that. Okay. So did you see that? You got to. He wants you to be perfect. As not just perfect compared to you or you. <laughs> Come perfect as he is perfect. Is what he said. Okay. That's pretty heavy. It's a heavy burden. You know what the Bible says about in the New Covenant? It says his commandments are not burdensome. That's right. So that is not a commandment we want to live under about being, having to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't want to live under that commandment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because his commandments are not a burden. That's right. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. Wow. So let's live by this one. This is no burden. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect. This is a work of God. This is not a work of Henry trying to be perfect because he is perfect. This is a work of God making you perfect forever. Hello. Yeah. Are you feeling me? Next. Don't get me started. <laughs> get started. For if I forgive other people when they sin against me, then my Heavenly Father will forgive me. But if I don't forgive others their sins, then he will not forgive me. Okay, you know what that is? Deuteronomy 28 says, You're blessed if you keep all these commandments. You're cursed if you don't. That was law. Blessed if you do, cursed if you don't. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Blessed if you do, law. cursed if you don't. Yep. It's law. Yep. Watch this. <laughs> hey, you love this. I don't play games. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation for anybody who believes. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. Be kind and compassionate. Okay, that's it. You've got to forgive to be forgiven. You've got to earn forgiveness. Watch this. Be kind. Yes. Be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just yes, as yes. in Christ God forgave in Christ. you. Yes. Amen. In Christ. Yes. Already forgiven, done deal, paid for it in the cross, believe it, and share it. That's the new commandment. The Bible says this is the command. In 1 John it says this is the commandment, mm -hmm. to believe on Jesus Christ and love others the way he loves you. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he gave commandment. Yeah. There it is. It's heavy. There's no burden in that. Just believe on Jesus Christ, receive his love, and share it. There's no good, there's no burden. 
Next? Okay. In him we have redemption total. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, yes. in accordance with the riches of his grace. When he's talking about grace, he says we already have it. We already have it. Uh, you have it. Yeah. yeah. You don't lose it. He became sin for you so you can become righteous in him. You don't Come lose on. it. Come on. It's yeah. a trade-off. It's an exchange. He who knew no sin became sin, sin for you for so you who had knew no righteousness could become righteous in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready to make some preachers out of you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to look for a platform. You get to believe this stuff. <laughs> Bear with one another. Again, this is Colossians. Same thing. This is repeated. So you wouldn't get this. It's not forgive to be forgiven after the cross. Jesus said that before the cross to bury you in your junk. Mm -hmm. Help you see. You think you're keeping the law. You're not keeping it. Why are you trying to kill me? You're not keeping the law. So bear with each other and forgive each other. If any of you has a grievance, any grievance, any grudge, any vindictive something, anything against somebody, forgive as the Lord forgave you. You already got it. Now good. That's good. For he has, past tense, rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son, but of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption of forgiveness sins. You have it. I mean, let's repeat it. Next. Teacher. This guy comes to Jesus and he says, Teacher, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, Well, love God with all your mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Come on. Yeah. This is the first. Well, notice he said, "What is the greatest commandment in the law?" Mm -hmm. This is law talk. Next, people are preaching this today, and we're not under law; we're under grace. That's true. And the second is like it: love your neighbor the way you love yourself. All the law and the prophets are on these two. Again, the law. Okay, that's law. Mm -hmm. So, do we not love God? No. The Bible says we only love Him because He first loved us. We respond to him. We're responders to his love. We don't have to love him with all our mind's own strength. We are responding to his love. Look at the cross. Respond to that. Whoo, buddy. Now, that we, what do you say? You've got to love God with all your That's a commandment. That's the first and greatest commandment. You have to love God with everything you've got. What do you say? None of you keep the law. We fail. This is love. This is 1 John. This is after the cross. This is love. Not that we love God. Mm -hmm. Not that we love him with all our heart, soul, and strength. That he loved us. <laughs> but that he loved us and sent his son as a 20th sacrifice for our sins. Again, he's talking about the cross. Yeah, Again, Amen. he's talking about the cross. Mm -hmm. it's just, this is, I only preach Christ and be crucified. Mm -hmm. I like Paul, I only preach Christ crucified. Come on. Okay? Uh, Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Next. <laughs> We, it says 1 John 4, 19, it goes on to say we love him because he first loved us. Does it sound like I have to love him with all my heart, or do I just respond to his love for me? Respond to his love. That's what Paul said in, in, in Ephesians chapter 3. He said, I pray, he's praying for the Ephesians, he says, I pray that your roots go down deep into his marvelous love and see how high, how deep, how long, how wide his love. It's beyond your imagination. And so by doing so, you'll be filled to the fullness of God. It's time to focus on his love. Amen. Let your roots go down deep into his love. And then his love will capture your heart. Like prodigal son's coming home and the father just capturing that kid with his heart. Showering love and gifts. Blowing that kid's mind. He thought there would be something, something, and there was nothing. Not love and acceptance. Amen. Amen. And it captured that kid's heart. That's how it works. God has to capture yours with his. Okay, and the second is I love your neighbor the way, oh, oh, oh. and the second is love, love your neighbor the way you love yourself, okay? Right? Next. A new, okay, so he said you got to love people the way you love yourself. That was the law. Watch this. See, Jesus is saying two different things. Are you following me? He's saying two different things. He said when he asked for the law, he said love your neighbor the way you love yourself. And this, now he says a new commandment. New commandment, that means new covenant. This you can take to the cross. You, you want to take something comfortably to the cross. Uh, you want to take something comfortably from the old covenant into the new covenant. Look what he said, new commandment. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Okay, so it's not law, you have to love others the way you love yourself. Come on. It's a new commandment, love the way he loves you. Respond to my love and share. That's heavy. Next. How are we doing? Okay. 
do not judge, and you will not. Oh. This is deep. This is putting it all in a package so I can make it so clean you. It's not funny. Not he says, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Not. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Okay, do you see that? It's pretty heavy. That's pretty burdened. That's a burden. That is a burden. Okay? Does that, do all of us really live lives that are never vindictive, never unforgiving, never judging people? Are we really that holy in and of ourselves? Nope. No. Okay, next. He says, whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. Okay? And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven. Notice this is in Matthew chapter 12. This is probably, this is years before he even goes to the cross. Right? He hasn't gone to the cross yet. And he says, every, but, he, but he's talking about the cross. He, what is he pointing to when he says every sin will be forgiven? The cross. And so I tell you, every sin, every sin will be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now here's the question. We wonder about that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. What is that? You don't even have to go past the context. Watch. Whoever is not with me is against me. Is against me. Yep. So whoever is, is not with me would be in a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Whoever is for me would have to be every sin forgiven. Amen. For or against. Mm -hmm. You're either forgiven every sin or you're not. Mm -hmm. Come on. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit right there. It's, un it's, it's just it's unforgiveness. Jesus said those who believe would not be condemned. Those who believe are condemned already for not believing on sin. So it's just condemned or not. There's no middle ground. There's no gray area. That's heavy. Go to the next one. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for the sins of many. Okay, here you go. This is the deal. When Jesus said you got to forgive to be forgiven, he hasn't gone across yet. He's talking about here about a blood purchased forgiveness. Forgiveness through the blood. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for your forgiveness. There it is. Blood-bought forgiveness. Next. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is pretty clear. Okay. I'm going to help you right now. This, this proves my point. If nothing can prove my point more than this. Because he says here, oh my gosh, this is heavy. Therefore, my friends, I want, this is in Acts. This is after Jesus went to the cross. It's probably about 10 years after Jesus went to the cross. The book of Acts is about 30 years, 20, 30 years. Okay, so this is back in chapter 13, so he, you know, this is way after the cross. He says, therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through this man, Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Mm -hmm. yep. But look at this. Are you ready? This is a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Come that on. means this was not available when Jesus was walking on this earth. Amen. Wow. Wow. Amen. Yeah. So he couldn't preach like it was. Yeah. He had to go to the cross first. Oh, that's deep. That proves my point right there. Okay, I, I, yeah. Next. But you know that he appeared so that he... Okay, we're almost done. This is the last few. This is deep. Now, he wants you to know this. He says we, but we know. We Christians. In this book, for John, he's dealing with Gnosticism. People are coming into church and they're polluting the gospel. Okay, they're saying they don't have any sin. They're saying Jesus didn't come in the flesh. And he says that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That's what is going on in First John. And he takes you to this, and he says, but we know that he appeared so that he might take away. Remember, they're saying he, did, he wasn't manifested. To, he wasn't manifested. He did not come in the flesh. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. He says we know he did manifest. We know he did come in the flesh. And as far as them saying that we don't have any sin, he says if you confess your sins, he's faithful. He's talking to people who say, but if you say you have no sin. See, right? So he says, but we know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him, there's no sin. Amen. In him, there's no sin. Are you in him? Are you in him? In him, there's no sin. Are you the righteousness of God in Christ? Amen. Mm -hmm. Or are you in sin? Come on. Yeah. Jesus, did Jesus become sin for you? Huh? Are you not in your sin? I mean, or are you in sin? <laughs> so, yeah, we know. Okay, one more second. Ready? This is good. I can see you smiling. This is good stuff. Okay, now this is deep. Okay, now how many know that the Bible says if you confess Christ as Lord and believe in your heart and rose from the dead, you'll be saved? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So our faith has to be in a risen Savior. That's where your faith is useful. That's where it is not futile. 
Because you believe he rose from the dead and you're safe. Look at this. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. Because we're putting our faith in the risen Savior. He says, then your faith is useless, futile, and you are still in your sins. What did I just say a minute ago? If you're in him, you're not in your sin. He's saying that right now. He rose from the dead. We believe that. So you're not in your sins. He really became sinful. He really did. Next one. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteous of God in Christ. Now, watch this. This is heavy. Okay. Notice there's a might there. There's no might here. Where he, be, he who knew no sin became sin for you, there's no might. The Bible says in the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It says in 1 John that he not only died for our sins, he died for the sins of the whole world. He died for the sins of the world. He, he did that. There's no might there. Where there's a might is how you become righteous in him. Yeah. Believe. Okay. Believe. Where your righteousness comes from. It's not from being more righteous than the Pharisees. It's from a God-given righteousness where you submit to the rights of God and stop trying to establish your own. Submit. That's the key word. Submission. So that in him we might become the rights of God. So if you're a believer, let's get rid of the might. There's no might if you're a believer. If you have a son, you have life. If you don't have a son, you don't have life. So if you have a son, there's no might. You're the rights of God in him. He became sin for you. What a blessing. Isn't that Amen. Great? Amen. How are we doing for time? Really? Pretty much? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the last one. Okay, well, that's good stuff. Okay, so, so remember, I'm going to show you with this so you know what the deal is. Well, let me just tell you, this is why he preaches so well, because I come to know God's love like crazy. Okay, I found out that God does not set, kick people to the curb. I did a study last week that, that Adam, he brought sin into the world. And he hid from God. Mm -hmm. But God didn't hide from him. That's right. Yeah. He says, Adam, where are you? Take off those fig leaves. Let me cover you with animal skins. He didn't get God on the curb. God didn't kick him on the curb. Mm -hmm. You see David when he sinned with Bathsheba. That whole chapter, he never mentions God once. When he went against Goliath, Oh my God, it was God, 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 God. He, he spoke, he said, the Lord will give you into my hands. He will, all the nation of Israel will know there was a God. It was God, 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 God. For in one, in like two, two paragraphs, it was God, God, eight times. In chapter 11, when he sleeps with Rashidra, then he mentioned God once. He threw God on the shelf. God didn't throw him on the shelf. After he sinned with Rashidra, he said, Nathan, go tell him. Hey, God knows what you did, but he took away your sin. That's what he says. God, he threw God on the bus, he didn't throw him on the bus. You see that in Paul, you see, you see that in Peter. Peter said, deny the Lord three times. But you know when, the Jesus wrote, when, when the, after the Jesus rose from the tomb, the angel told the women, he says, go tell the others and Peter. See, Peter threw God on the bus. He was sentencing himself. He denied Jesus three times. He was sentencing himself from the disciples. But God says, go get him. Amen. He's still part of the world. Good shepherd. He threw God on the bus, God didn't throw him on the bus. Yeah, God. Look at Paul. Paul had no faith in Jesus. He was persecuting Christians. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what God did? Jesus had faith in Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul had no faith in Jesus, but God, Jesus had faith in Paul. Isn't that amazing? You see this again in the prodigal son. Even Judas, you know, this is in the prodigal son. The father didn't throw the kid under the bus. Not once. The kid threw him under the bus. And wasted all his money on prostitutes and stuff, you know. And he would decide to come home because he's hungry. He wasn't sorry, he was hungry. And the father took him back. He just said, the door's wide open, I'm looking for you. Shower you with gifts. You see, it's all through the Bible that God, he would, like you said, he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. He's always been like that. Amen. And he can't once you accept Jesus because he says, now that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, your body for Christ is not even your own. He takes ownership. Yep, amen. That's heavy. And you know, even Judas, I'll finish with this. Even Judas, even Judas, I believe he came back to the Lord. He would have said, like he said to Peter, Do you love me, Judas? Do, do you love me? <laughs> Judas, do you love me? Judas, feed my sheep. Judas, do you love me? Feed my lambs. When it went the way he treated Peter, you think he would have treated Judas any different? Absolutely not. In the, in the middle of Judas betraying him, mm -hmm. he said, friend, friend. friend. Oh, do what you came to do. He still called him a friend. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't reject him. Judas threw him under the bus, but God didn't throw him under the bus. 
He died and he died without Jesus. He, he, he killed himself. Yeah. He did that to himself. He threw God to him under the bus. Yeah. Jesus never threw him under the bus. And I can teach that so well because I, as a drug addict, a drug dealer, I have come, I've been to state prison five times. I've been to county jails a hundred times. I've committed so many crimes. I've gone into jail. I get to know the Lord God so well. And then I go out that, to that door. The first thing I do is go back to drugs. I threw God under the bus a dozen times. You know what? And I found, look at me today. Come on. Man. God never threw me into the bus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I left him. I forsake him. He never left me or forsake me. He says he won't. Powerful testimony. Come on. There it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Father God, I thank you for this time. These brothers and sisters, I just pray that this thank message you. is a seed. Your word says that don't stop praying in your seed because you don't know what seed will take root. Perhaps it all will. And I pray that every seed I planted today will take root. Yes, God. Amen. 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 Amen.